A career in construction has many different paths. Here at Matrone, we want to help you decide which path is right for you. In today's video, we're looking at the three main construction sectors in the UK. You might find that one sector interests you more than the other, which is why it's important to explore the different options to help align your career path. So let's get started. According to RICS, the UK construction industry contributes to 7% of UK's GDP, employing over 3 million people, making up 9% of the UK's workforce. But let's break this down per sector. First off, we have infrastructure, making up 15% of UK construction. Infrastructure can be described as the basic facilities and systems serving a country, region or community. In terms of construction, this covers transport, which can be broken down further into highways, railways, bridges and tunnels, or utilities, which include water, wastewater, gas, oil, electricity and telecommunications. Infrastructure forms the bedrock of our society. Having robust infrastructure allows for economic growth and enables households and firms in large societies to function. Most of the investment in infrastructure is publicly funded, and according to UK Parliament, 85% of public sector investment in infrastructure is spent on transport. The most widely used contract form for public infrastructure work is the NEC. Next up we have residential construction, making up approximately 40% of UK construction. Residential construction doesn't just account for new houses, it also includes repair, maintenance or extension work on existing dwellings. The UK government estimates that around 300,000 new dwellings are required each year to keep up with the UK housing shortage. In 2019, the government set a target of reaching this figure by mid-2020s. However, this is looking unlikely to be met, with only 231,100 new homes built in 2023 according to Savills. The UK housing shortage will continue to dominate UK politics over the next few years, with ideas from both parties being proposed on how best to solve the crisis. In theory, this should mean a strong pipeline of future work. However, talks of unmet housing targets have been dominating the news for over a decade now. New dwelling should lead the way for new investment into other construction sectors mentioned in this video. New homes require new infrastructure and can bring additional investments into non-residential construction as the size of communities expand. Finally, we have non-residential building construction, making up 40% of UK construction, the biggest market share within the industry. This sector includes things like shops, restaurants, schools, hotels, places of worship, entertainment venues, public and private buildings, storage facilities, warehouses and offices to name a few. Residential and non-residential construction have started to cross over to a greater extent in recent years, with buildings in large cities slash towns having allocated spaces for accommodation, shops and offices. A good example of this is the recent refurbishment of Battersea Power Station, which serves as a place to live, eat, drink, work, shop and be entertained. In addition to containing apartments, Battersea has over 140 shops, bars, restaurants, leisure and entertainment venues parks and historical spaces. Perhaps we'll see lots more residential and non-residential hybrid projects in future years. This could be a way to address the housing shortage while expanding infrastructure and amenities all at once. As a quantity surveyor in non-residential building, you'll likely be working on a JCT contract form. Let us know in the comments what sector you work in and what your experience has been. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button. Matrone, a commercial hub for your business.